Ladies and gentlemen of the DCU, welcome back to a brand new DCU discussion series video. By the time you're seeing this, I am away on a little vacation, Monday to Friday of this week. So apologies, I, I mean, I don't know if there's big news dropping, but if there's any news this week, I'm not going to be here to cover it, but I have pre-recorded videos like this to go up recently. I asked you guys to submit all kinds of things, theories, questions, you name it, about the DCU. Uh, on my community tab I've taken other comments from other videos so we're gonna dive into it but let's start off right away with question number one actually before we do I would really appreciate a like on this video if you guys just want to go the extra mile to support the channel and yeah obviously consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this but number one here we have uh, from Limey Fella saying if Superman and the Brave and the Bold are both successful then a world's finest movie seems like a no-brainer and I would agree, uh, the world's finest movie absolutely seems like a no-brainer. Uh, even recently, as of when I'm making this video, Gunn uh, talked about, um, or was asked, you know, what would you title a Batman and Superman movie? And he was like, world's finest. And, and that seems obvious, but, you know, that's not always been the case. But it's nice to know that if he was going to do a Batman and Superman movie, that would be the title, appropriately so. And yeah, if it was, if they are successful, which, you know, fingers crossed that the DCU is successful with their Batman and Superman movies, that we would get something like that. And then you can kind of bleed this into other, you know, theories. Like, okay, World's Finest, absolutely, that is a thing outside the Trinity. But where is, you know, will we be getting Wonder Woman after the World's Finest, uh, you know, project? If we do get a World's Finest project. And that can eventually lead into a Trinity movie. Or are we not going to get really a Trinity project in addition? to a world's finest project but rather maybe we'll see the trinity in a larger kind of ensemble movie but as for actual projects of team-ups between the trinity members if you will it could just be confined to a world's finest project after the batman and superman movies are out possibly i would love to know your guys's thoughts on that like what would you like to see succeed superman from james gunn then brave and the bold from andy muschietti uh would you like it to be a trinity project or do you think that wonder woman and just i guess the trinity after both of those initial movies brave and the bold and superman should be world's finest and then a justice league kind of thing to close out chapter one and as we launch into chapter two it's, it's always an interesting thing to consider when we've already had so many projects announced yet we still do have quite a few left with chapter one to be announced but it's not something i think we're going to hear about anytime soon but i'm very excited for those final projects to be announced at some point in time because you would have to think as you're closing out the chapter one you're going to get more of the beefy kind of chapter closing projects to you know really cement chapter one and move into chapter two and that would be for what a lot of us are assuming some kind of big project with multiple heroes within it now gremlin spike 69 says here justice society of america so in my community post i did ask you know what kind of dc projects would you like to see in the future and this is very close to my heart i mean if you've been watching me for a long time guys you know that i really really want this to happen like really 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 badly it's just that in my like head canon of how this could happen it doesn't need to happen for quite a while it could even be reserved for chapter two but justice society of america i think should be a thing of the past in the dcu now we know we're getting a prequel paradise lost i've spoken about this quite a few times before that is something that is happening at some point in time it could still be years away but eventually I i've always said this you know at some point in time you know you could say hey you've seen Superman, you've seen the Brave and the Bold, you've seen Lanterns, let's assume it all went well and you've enjoyed that, but now let's get a peek into the past of the DCU. Instead of looking at the present day, how did the world of heroes get from maybe where, you know, you had this good moral compass of heroes, you had this superhero autonomy with JSA members, but when we pick up with Superman, maybe things are a little bit more regulated as per our speculations and theories, but maybe Superman's going to be the thing that breaks 
you know, or, or sets a new status quo out there and parameters for what a hero should be like, maybe not so much in uh, a company uniform. But the JSA, it's like a peek into the past where superheroes being public was a bit of, I, I don't know if I would say brand new because who knows how far this DCU goes back with public heroes. I mean, think about it. Paradise Lost goes back thousands of years before the birth of Diana. So public heroes in America, if you will, could technically go back before them. But my my main talking point here is that the heroes back then probably even inspired Clark Kent to not kind of, um, you know, pertain to that of what the current present day DCU standards are for superheroes. And that's why he's wearing his own suit, doesn't really want to conform to maybe what's out there. This could piss people off like Lex Luthor to other companies out there. Obviously, there's still a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of speculation that we are doing here. I'm not right about everything. Absolutely not. But my only point here is that I think it would be so cool to see a golden age of heroes in the DCU. You could even chuck in Wonder Woman in the JSA project if it's in World War II, if you know what I mean, to kind of flesh things out even more. But I, I think this is a no-brainer for me personally because it, it, it could be a prequel, it could be its own thing, it's still in the DCU, but you see how heroes operated back then, you get characters like, I don't know, Our Man, Jay Garrick, to, to whoever else, Wildcat, and it can be such an awesome, you know, little thing in time that I think all fans would appreciate rather than that of like, I'm, just, I'm not saying there isn't a JSA in present day, that could still be really cool and we could even get some flavors of what could be going on there in various projects, but I think it should absolutely be reserved for a prequel series, but something that doesn't need to happen until like five or six plus years from now into the DCU's releases of projects. So up next, we have Drastic Vision 146 saying, Martian Manhunter has been neglected enough. It's time he got a movie or series. So Martian Manhunter, I, I do agree that, you know, I mean, I guess he was in Supergirl. We, we got a little glimpse of him in Zack Snyder's Justice League. But in terms of live action, yeah, I, I think it would be really cool to see him be featured. Now, as for a project, his own project, like a movie or a series, that could be really, really cool. But when I think about stuff like this, I always, you know, when I was taking a lot of screenshots for this video, people were like, oh, I want a Dr. Fate project. I want a Zatanna project. I want this project. I want that project. But I kind of have to put my mind into the shoes of the creators and also just the reality of things, which I admit is from my own personal perspective, but I'm trying to really put an effort in to be like, okay, so how would they really handle things here? Are we really going to get individual projects for individual heroes time and time and time and time and time and time and time again over the next eight to 10 years? I don't think that's a reality that's going to happen. For example, with Zatanna or Constantine or Dr. Fate, you could see these characters absolutely but rather than them all having their own separate projects, like that of a typical formulaic, you know, universe, cinematic universe thing to do, you know, like, oh, Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Captain America 1, Captain, you know, that kind of thing. I do think a lot of characters will be in the DCU, but maybe in that of project movies, like, uh, or should I say team movies. So I've seen some people say, I want a Raven solo project, but I don't think that will happen. I think you will see Raven, but in that of a Titans project. So I kind of have to be like picky and choosy with imagining who they could actually give dedicated projects to, because they're still, despite everything I just said, are going to do that and have done that. I mean, look at Superman, Booster Gold, Swamp Thing. So it is interesting because they are doing that, but I know they're not going to do that with everyone. So now what we need to kind of like look at is who else could they do this for? And maybe Martian Manhunter could be one of them, especially with his background, how harsh and, you know, tragic his, his origin is to then kind of, you know, coming to Earth and like, you know, integrating with Earth, how people see him, how other heroes see him. That could be a really, really cool series. You know, I think of something like Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow and knowing the premise of that story and what Kara's going to go through, how it's going to be this kind of space faring adventure. I don't see why you can't have Martian Manhunter come from his beginnings all the way to Earth and be a bit of an origin story there. But this is where we come to this point in the video is where it's like, we just don't know. Of course, this, this you know, whole video and this video series we do on the channel, also with, you know, the Batman and stuff, it's all about the enjoyment of entertaining. 
the hypothetical. So I would challenge you guys to think, okay, there's Martian Manhunter, and depending on our own biases, if you will, like we might really want this character to have its own project. And we know that is a possibility because of other individual hero projects, but we also know with the DCU having two TV shows and two movies a year, and we know that the DCU is an eight to 10 year plan as of when Superman launches is where I believe the eight to 10 year time span will really start uh, kicking off. I guess technically from Creature Commandos, you can understand that there's going to be around 20-ish projects per chapter. So like every four or five years, there's 20 to 22, give or take, right? So there is a lot of opportunity, but they're not going to give every single person and character, popular or not, a individual project. Some will be included in teams. I think that will be a prime example of that could be Justice League Dark rather than an individual Constantine or Zatanna project, even though my bias for Constantine wants me to have his own project. But which heroes should we give uh, more opportunity to? Because I think if you look at Gunn and who he's chosen, I wouldn't say Swamp Thing or Booster Gold isn't popular, but it is definitely, you can kind of get a bit of an education into like how and which heroes he's choosing and deciding to give these individual projects to. So it's like Swamp Thing, a lot of people, or like the authority, people, well, that's not an individual project, but it's not, you know, a lot of people have been criticizing Oh, should we even be getting that? You know, why can't we get a Trinity project? Why isn't there a Wonder Woman project in the first couple of years of the DCU or in all the projects they've announced so far, which is well over 10 by now? So Martian Manhunter has been neglected enough in time. It's time he got like a movie or a series. I would say like he's up there for like what could be a really cool original story if you're doing something like Swamp Thing and giving Booster Gold his own project. Why not someone like Martian Manhunter? It's going to be difficult to know who else we could get in the future, but it my, my kind of vibe meter is like, yeah, he. I can almost imagine Gunn would flirt with the idea of doing this. But yeah, this, I mean, God, it could be like at some point in chapter two, Maybe chapter one with the remaining projects because we've got like a good seven, eight, nine, I I'm guessing to go because again, two DCU uh, TV series and movies a year times that by four. That gives you roughly 20. We've had like 12, 13 announced so far, including, you know, the Blue Beetle animated series. Well, technically these aren't confirmed, confirmed, but Shola Mardwania basically, you know, kind of gave us a big clue about that. There's the Dead Man rumor that feels like somewhat of a sure thing or without official confirmation so there is still room left but i don't know about chapter two because you have to also think is martian manhunter already on earth uh has he been active out there or will heroes like this in this adaptation uh be coming to earth in an origin story and we'll see that from the get-go because despite how much i talk about how some heroes are like 10 years into their career like look at how jordan with those rumors uh look at batman that's kind of an obvious thing he could still be in his 30s with that level of experience you will still get some origin stories for sure perhaps Swamp Thing with what James Mangold has teased about that movie seems very origin-esque Booster Gold I wouldn't be surprised if he you know steals the technology and comes back to present day and we see that origin so yeah Martian Manhunter could be an origin as well or you know it might be he might be a hero who's already been in in the DCU for a while but his own movie kind of gets into his backstory in maybe a bit of a prequel sense I I rambled about that one for quite a while, but I just found it quite an interesting topic that transcends just the concept of a Martian Manhunter project, but also which other heroes could we see get individual projects in the DCU. Now, Red Boy YT3902 says, the question getting his own detective film would be great. I saw a lot of other people say this as well. Um, you know, a TV series or a movie. I think for the question, it would, I mean, I guess, yeah, a movie would work, but a, a TV series, a limited one, similar to Lanterns, eight episodes would be really, really cool if it's like a compelling story for the question to undergo and investigate. It would just be so cool. Gun. And what I really like about the question with entertaining the possibility of the character is that he has liked posts about will question be in a DCU. He's done like several things. I think he even replied once or twice really heavily indicating, similar to his teasers about Deathstroke, that all while we don't have a lot of insight into these characters, it's kind of like, hey, just like what I was saying a couple of seconds ago, with there being several projects remaining, multiple in that of the remaining chapter one, let alone chapter two, it feels like he's just kind of waiting to let us know that they will have projects 
in the DCU at some point. So I would love that. I need that. I really love the idea of a question series or a movie. I think they can tie into the overarching story, given the character and who the character is, what the character is about. I'm not saying it has to pertain to him unraveling like a crucial or key factor about the overarching story. Uh, it could also be really interesting if it's just like a little self-contained thing that the question is investigating. And it's just like, again, like this you know, self-contained story that doesn't necessarily have to ripple out into larger main story arc things for the main DCU's continuity. Sometimes a little self-contained thing could be really, really awesome. So with that being said, and all of you out there who would like to see the question come to fruition in James Gunn's DCU, do you think it, it should be like a story that contributes to the main overarching DCU story, similar to how Lanterns as Peter Safran and Gunn have really emphasized that it's a really important story with this murder in the American heartland and how they go on to uncover this ancient terrifying mystery that is going to ripple out we don't quite know what to yet or like how it's going to play into this main story that they're doing but do you think that the question should be a part of that plot thread or do you think it should be a cool little self-contained like story or you know issue in that of a question comic book in where he's doing his own thing because I, I do want to stress that as well out of all of these projects that we get um, not all of them are going to be like, you know, main story connected things. They're going to be stories in of their own like self and right. Like Swamp Thing with what James Mangold has teased. It, I don't know if it's going to be like an outright origin. I think the movie could pick up with him being Swamp Thing. But the way it's being conducted with what Mangold has already teased, and he kind of gave away quite a bit, although this could be really subject to change. He said that it's going to be about him basically kind of going throughout the movie and piecing together parts of his memory as to how he even became to be Swamp Thing, which is a really cool kind of thing because it's like, you know, you go along various chapters in the movie, you are this thing, and along the way you, you kind of get the origin in the backstory as Swamp Thing learns about the person he was and unlocks the memories to give him the context of where he is now. That is a pretty self-contained, cool kind of, more or less character study of a Swamp Thing movie. So you can obviously do that with different comic book characters as well. And maybe the question should just do that. Just be a cool little question plot for whatever he's trying to investigate. And I'd be really down for that as well. Now, next up from uh, Book and Nan, I believe. I'm actually really looking forward to all of James Gunn's small character shows and movies. It brings a lot of fun to the universe. Something I would primarily want to see, though, would be anything with Zatanna. As I've already aforementioned, I think the best way to tackle that, although I could be completely wrong, what? What if they do do a literal separate Zatanna project? But I do think a way to kind of, you know, kill several birds with one stone um, is to kind of do a Justice League Dark project, of which is a project that has been almost happening several times, most recently with J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Productions, Back before we even were getting this DCU, they were trying to do something on HBO Max like that. There's going to be a Madame X series, a Constantine series, Justice League Dark, a Zatanna thing. So I think that will still be hopefully adopted into the DCU. And, I, you know, as much as I would like separate projects for these characters, again, what I said about Constantine, I think a Hellblazer series or a movie would be incredible in the DCU. But I, I think if you want to try and get this off the ground in a DCU, again, as I always say here and remind people about, that's already existed for a while. I would have to assume that Constantine's been doing his magic thing for a while. Maybe he's like seven years into it. You know, you could toss in any number there. Maybe Zatanna's the noob and she's only just coming into her powers. Or maybe she's been doing it a similar time to David Corrin's Sweat Superman. Not too long, but maybe just about two years. You can really kind of, you know, uh, springboard these characters in to a whole project like Justice League Dark and that would also be a way to kind of serve uh, something for fans of those characters um, that you know aren't necessarily the most popular I'm not saying these characters aren't popular before anyone goes mad at me for that but they're obviously not like Batman Superman Wonder Woman or, or whatever else so I do think the chance of a Justice League Dark project and thus Justice League Dark characters 
is hopeful. But you also have Dead Man, the animated project, which seems to be quite a thing. And with Dead Man, I'm kind of counting on a lot of world building and exposition into the supernatural side of the DCU. Because the thing about Swamp Thing is, I don't like leaning too much into an expectation of, oh, they're gonna like backdoor pilot Constantine in there and Doctor Fate and, you know, Zatanna, when, what if Mangold really, and Mangold has said this himself, like, I'm sure, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like, I'm sure DC view this as like a, you know, um, a bigger thing. Um, as in, like, you know, a part of a bigger connected universe, and it is. One thing will be canon to Corrin Sweat Superman, but he's treating it like a solo movie. And fair enough, because Gunn said that you're going to be getting projects that are like an individual comic book issue story. And I'm all about that. But that's why with Swamp Thing, I wouldn't expect to have other characters shoehorned in there for the sake of leading into something else. You could be maybe half lucky with a post credit scene, but that would feel a bit tacked on there. So... I don't have much hope for Swamp Thing really branching into larger things in the grand scheme of all of this discussion, but rather than it might just be reserved for a show like Dead Man as he's learning the ropes uh, about what happened with him and the world he's getting inducted into in the supernatural side of things. You could also run into other characters that he gets assistance from, maybe Constantine Zatanna. This could also lead or backdoor pilot into something like a Justice League Dark series. And yeah, I I'm really game for something like that. And these questions we're getting are all kind of similar in a way, bouncing off of one after another, because what George W1014 says uh, is, is really fascinating to consider, given what I've kind of just said a couple of questions ago so we 100% need a Nightwing movie. My pick for who should write and direct is Drew Goddard. He's a part of the DCU's writing room but currently has no DC projects in the works. His work on Daredevil proves that he can nail a Nightwing project. Plus I also really like his film Bad Times at the El Royale and his writing for The Martian and Cloverfield. So I, as a lover of Nightwing, would love a Nightwing project. But going back to what I was talking about like 10 or so minutes ago, is this one of the characters that will get it? When you could include a Nightwing, you know, a real focused Nightwing thing within that of the larger story of a Titans project. Because one thing I, I keep bringing up, because we just don't really know what's going on with it, is how we have that Hollywood Reporter story from March 15th, 2024, and the, and the headline is Teen Titans live action movie a go at DC Studios exclusive. Now this has always been fascinating because the Hollywood Reporter is a big trade and for them to put something out like that they must have heard something really concrete. And James Gunn has never debunked it. Sure he liked that one post, it was just a like, but I do feel like there is smoke behind the fire with stuff like this because Gunn has demonstrated many times when there's like a major trade story that he feels is happily BS, like something from Variety that we've had before or a few times before with him quoting it. He's like, this is not true, like not true. And that's it. But he didn't do that with this one. He didn't. Why not? Like if, I mean, there's absolutely not even one fiber of my body that believes that Gunn didn't see this and wasn't aware of it. And so therefore you have to ask yourself, why didn't he do a proper quote tweet or thread saying not true? full stop, like he's done many times before. Well, that's because maybe they didn't get every detail right about this exclusive scoop, but there's parts of it that could be true, such as Anna Nogueira, who wrote the screenplay for Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, could have very well have been tapped to write the screenplay for this Teen Titans live action movie, but there could also be other in inaccuracies with it. What if it's not like a Teen Titans? What if it's like an adult Titan? So there's all of this we have to figure out, but going back to what I was saying, the reason why I'm a bit hesitant to believe like, okay, yeah, Nightwing movie, I feel confident in that one, is because I do think that Nightwing um, will be getting his story in that of a Teen Titans project or an adult Titans project rather than that of a Nightwing movie and then, you know, getting a Titans project or a Titans project and then after that we get a solo Nightwing movie. I do get the desire for it, but I do think that if the DCU can kind of kill a few birds with one stone, as the saying goes, if you will, so like tackle a few characters 
instead of doing multiple separate character projects and it makes sense to do this team project, they will do that. They'll probably opt for that instead. And not only that, Nightwing is a long desired character to have a lot of, you know, screen time or his own project, but so is the Titans in terms of like a proper, we're talking cinematic universe, right? A cinematic universe project about the Titans. That is wild if you really think about it for a lot of DC fans. So if you can service that character in a movie, and I do get the desire for big Nightwing fans to have their own separate project, but I think the latter is more probably going to be the case, especially if there's any truth to Anna Naguera, you know, writing and they're supposedly gearing up behind the scenes to do some kind of Titans thing. But again, this will probably be years and years away, you know, sometime after the Brave and the Bold. So I am hoping that, you know, a character like Nightwing will get started story throughout projects like this, maybe even starting off in The Brave and the Bold, because we know that Peter Safran and James Gunn have talked about how in The Brave and the Bold, Batman's going to have a Bat family, you know, because they feel that the Bat family has been neglected too long on the big screen. And that is technically true. So we could get those seeding moments with Nightwing, Dick Grayson, who may have only have just recently left being Robin, or maybe he's only just coming into Nightwing and there, he's on the precipice of that if he's not already Nightwing. And then that gets expanded on when Dick Grayson goes off on his own journey and finds other psychics and heroes to form a team. Or it could be reigniting the team because he could have already had a younger Teen Titans team when he was already a Robin for Bruce years and years ago. There's all kinds of theories. This is what I love about making videos like this because, you know, it's just like, you know, the variables of a situation. You can go, you know, down this road, but like off of this part of speculation, there's this part of like the splintered timeline or this idea that leads to that idea. And then there's this branch which branch is going to be the right branch or, you know, how accurate are we being at times when talking about this? Probably sometimes way more accurate than what we realize. And at other times I could be talking about stuff in where I'm really off, really, really off about it. But I do like to think that we are entertaining realistic ideas here, especially when you're backed up by major trades talking about stuff. So what I'll say is that um, I don't know if we're going to get a Nightwing movie, especially if I have a, you know, personally, I have a good feeling that Nightwing will be in the brave and the bold with maybe one or two other bat family members in addition to damian wayne and then he will just get expanded on in the titans project possibly as the leader of the titans with my dream antagonist being deathstroke because you know as I always say here people seem to forget that deathstroke is a you know teen titans rogues gallery character rather than that of a batman one not saying that he can't be a batman villain but oh man Oh man, would absolutely love that. Dylan Elliott 8718 says a Black Canary and Green Arrow film that takes them, their relationship and their costumes seriously. Lady Shiva to be the villain, hand-to-hand -hand fight sequences and Chad Stileski to direct. At least I would love that. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I really, I really am banking <laughs> on James Gunn giving us a Green Arrow movie. We know that Gunn's a big fan of Green Arrow. Um, I, I think, you know, a part of me was not surprised, but like, oh, when we first got those projects, you know, you look at the projects that are announced, like there's a Booster Gold one, there's like a Swamp Thing one as the ones we've already been over, the Authority, and it's like, okay, so, you know, you could easily argue if he wanted to have put a Green Arrow cinematic movie in that lineup, he could have, right, because there's, there's really, you know, popular character projects in there, lesser popular character projects, so... I, I really wanted to see that happen, but then it's like, okay, well, we still got a lot of projects left to go, don't we? So that can still easily happen, and I think, and I'm hopeful, that he is going to do that. And in this DCU that's already had this, you know, world existing with heroes, as we've been over about a billion, gazillion times before, I would like to think that Oliver Queen could be a vigilante already active. I don't think he has to be at the point of Batman, though. Like, I think Batman's going to be probably, arguably, one of the most, or should I say, longest standing and experienced vigilantes out there in terms of popularity like you know if Damien's coming in the Bat family's there he's definitely 10 12 years in and you know the age could be like mid 30s in my opinion at least you know with what we've talked about for a, for a long time but Oliver Queen could still be a vigilante in Star City and he could be three to five years in that that would be dope or it could be year one so I do like the idea of picking up with a project that may be not just Green Arrow change up the formula instead of doing 
a solo green arrow project, which you could do because look at Booster Gold, look at Swamp Thing, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we go for like, hey, Green Arrow and Black Canary already know each other. That would be pretty cool as well. Do a project in where they're together and they're tackling something. I think there could be a cool dynamic with that as well, especially regarding Oliver Queen's you know, humor, his characteristics, how quippy he is. I'm not saying, uh, you know, Pair of Black Canary is going to be like a, a you know, a freaking Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of thing. But do you see where I'm going? That there could be something fun explored there with a dynamic that's already existed. And I know some people have this kind of um, issue with trying to imagine established characters already without getting into their backstory but i i don't worry about that because you can even as like uh, a casual viewer and fan of dc who doesn't know too much about something still get introduced to these characters who are already established without having to know the origin and oliver returning from the island and why he is the green arrow and and stuff like that i think you know a good writer and a good showrunner and everything like that can absolutely fill in all these blanks and exposition building for the characters in their series or movie in a way that is very competent and, you know, not only, you know, gets you into the swing of things, but lets you learn about the characters at the same time. So I don't know. I, I, that's a whole other thing, really, that people were talking about with a lot of, you know, the DCU because we're already hitting the ground running with, you know, pre-established histories already being made. I know a lot of people have issues with, oh, we're not going to see Robin's backstory in The Brave and the Bold because he could already be Nightwing and et cetera, et cetera. But, um, um, you know, with regards to Black Canary and a Green Arrow film, that would be epic. And I would really love that. But how would you like to see that tackled? Would you like that to be a chapter one project? Maybe one of the remaining, you know, several that we've got to go? Or do you think, yeah, you know, maybe Oliver Queen's out there doing his thing, but we might not see that project until, I don't know, you know, year seven of the DCU. Next up from the SSJ Joker saying an actual good Flash movie for once with Thorn as the main villain, of course. I'm going to pair this in with David King 9729's comment saying, number one, a Flash movie with Wally West as the Flash, but not for Getting about Barry Allen, chapter one. Number two, a Green Arrow movie, chapter one. We just talked about that. Three, a Nightwing movie, chapter two. We've talked about that. Number four, a Justice League International series, chapter two. And number five, a Trinity movie, chapter one, which you could argue could be one of the closing things of chapter one, instead of maybe even like a big, 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 big new frontier, loads of characters in it. What if it is just, yeah, like a Trinity movie? But back to the Flash thing here, I do wonder. And this has been a topic of discussion for a while. If Barry will kind of be left in the background and Wally will be like the main Flash of the DCU with the context in mind that this DCU has existed for a while. I'm not saying Barry's become an old man and he stopped being the Flash, um, but rather that the core focus will be on Wally. Uh, but as David says, you know, not forgetting about Barry Allen in this Wally project. Maybe we have Barry in it and mentoring Wally. I'm not sure. And this is kind of difficult because for me, uh, you know, everyone has their favorite Flash. And for me, it is Barry Allen. And I, in a perfect world, would have absolutely have loved a Flash movie with reverse Flash as the main villain. That kind of typical origin story is the kind of thing we already know by now, like the CW heavily did it. And I think kind of you know, Grant Gustin and Tom Cavanaugh and Matt Lester, you know, what they achieved back then. Say what you will about CW or writing here and there, but like season one, if you condensed like all of the filler out and just did that story, they did it very, very well with Barry, his mother, Nora and stuff like that. And it would be formulaic in that sense, but I would still really love a cinematic universe, movie budget level of that story. Earbard Thorne, Barry Allen. But I am coming around to accept the idea and I've got no real facts about this but intuitively to me it does feel like Barry Allen I wouldn't say he's gonna be left on the back burner but maybe you know that whole origin thing would have already you know in this DCU maybe the whole Eobard Thorn things happen with Barry he's still a very active Flash in his 30s still arguably in his prime in Central City but Wally West is where you know since we're hitting the ground running Batman could be 10 years in la di da da right Wally West is now at the time where he's getting or got his powers. And you could still do a thing in where Barry's quite a big part of that story, but the main hero is Wally. That I, I wouldn't be against that. Again, I have my preference. I, I My favorite Flash is Barry, but I do feel intuitively that, you know, 
with so much Barry Allen on the CW, we had Ezra Miller's movie uh, not really do that well at all in the grand scheme of things. Maybe from, you know, and what do I know really, right? But from a marketing and optics perspective in-house, in-studio, they might be like, if we are going to do a Flash, maybe we're going to lean into that. But we're not going to neglect Barry. He will be in it a new act as a new actor, and he will be a mentor. It could be really cool that way, but it's still, you know, it's still a Wally story. It's kind of like how, you know, I don't know, random example here, but in the Miles Morales Spider-Man game, you still had Peter Parker there, right? You still had him out there, and that could be a similar kind of execution that they could give to the Wally West project. Um, but maybe I'm completely off base there, but there's, there's just something about that of which I think if we're ever going to get a Flash project, that they're going to do it in the way that David King kind of said. Wally West, not forgetting about Barry, make Barry very relevant, for those Barry fans like myself, it is kind of a is what it is situation, but at least we still get him in it. But I don't know if it's going to be a chapter one project, especially with the Flash movie's performance. They might, you know, wait for the speedster side of things to breathe a little bit until chapter two. And then, you know, it would be a bit more refreshing to get a, a speedster project also with in mind of a different speedster, even though Barry will still be in it. It won't really be reminiscent of... Ezra Miller's Flash. And I'm not trying to make it sound like we've had a whole ass bunch of Barry Allen in the past, but you get what I'm trying to say. Now, Me of Justice says simply here, Wonder Woman, the animated series. And this is something we've had no update on for a while. And you might be like, what do you mean update? You're saying there's already a project in the works? Yes, we heard a long ass time ago now. Uh, well, not really, but March 11th, 2023. You literally had this user saying, Diana is a character with such a rich cast and so much untapped potential and stories. It's beyond past time for it to be explored. Hashtag Wonder Woman animated series. Gunn says, agreed working on it and there was even like another post he said where he's been trying to get a wonder woman's animated series off the ground since joining and you know starting up dc studios but that was all the way back then and it was never clear is this going to be like a dcu animated series like how you've got creature commandos an animated series and it's dcu canon and we'll see some of those characters become live action versions of themselves you know acted and voiced by the same people but like you know, what is this? Would this be the first Wonder Woman project in animated form and whoever voices her will be Wonder Woman in the DCU? Or is it just like a, you know, like Teen Titans Go thing or something else where how you have a Wonder Woman animated series in the Elseworlds side of things and Gunn's just trying to get something out there for Wonder Woman fans, but it's not going to be our Diana in the DCU. I don't know. And it's going to be interesting to see if it is a DCU animated Wonder Woman series because I think some people would view that as a bit of a double-edged sword. Like some people will love it. Hey, Wonder Woman animated series, so much potential there, great. But oh, are you really going to introduce one of your most popular characters on the other side, people will say, and I've seen this, uh, in animated format first rather than live action? Because I think, you know, even though animated is a very popular form uh, format, People view that as a less serious kind of approach to a DCU canonical character rather than that of like, you know, introducing them in live action first. It's more of like a, you know, hey, here's your live action Wonder Woman, right? It's taken a bit more seriously than introducing that character in an animated format first, but maybe not. I would love to know your thoughts about that. Which way do you think the DCU Wonder Woman should be executed first? Like canonical DCU Wonder Woman. And do you think that this Wonder Woman animated series has been acknowledged by Gunn multiple times now, granted a while ago, is Elseworlds? Or do you think it's DCU canon in the same vein as Creature Commandos or Dead Man or the Blue Beetle animated series. And will you have an issue with Wonder Woman um, being introduced in a DCU if it is indeed as an animated series first? I don't know. Next up from Timothy Patch 5080 I do not want an old Batman. I want a Batman for the next 10 to 15 years. I don't want another Batman getting ready to pass the torch as soon as this universe gets started. I don't think a Batman who's 10 years, 12 years into his career with Damien already being in the fold is an old Batman ready to pass the torch because Batman could still be 35, 36 in the DCU. And I don't know about you guys, that's not an old Batman to me who's ready to pass the torch on. And they most definitely can be the Batman for the next 10 plus years. So that's all I've really got to say about that. Like one thing I've observed is when talking about Batman's character age, and I do understand 
it can be earlier if they condense some things like training or start him off instead of 26 at 24 la di da da that you can have a younger batman in the dc with all that experience but still even if we average it out at our best speculation to be whoever will be batman let's just say brandon sklenar by the time they're filming might be 35 36 that's not an old man that's not an old man ready to pass on the torch not at all like what that's fine. Next up from Clay Crawford 7 saying, I want an unironic Legion of Doom get built towards, especially if people are right about the Hall of Justice leaks. However, I'd rather it be the Legion pulling the strings to create obstacles, like letting loose an apocalypse monster for Justice League to fight, but they find ways to get out of taking any blame. I think this is a really good idea as well. I have a whole video. I do recommend checking it out. It's titled something like the potential seven big bads of the DCU. And I go over like genuinely who I think could realistically be chosen to be the chapter one big bad or chapter two big bad. And I did mention the Legion of Doom in one of them because you have Holtz Lex Luthor in the Superman movie. I don't think Gunn's going to do the one and done approach where you have a villain just die in a movie or like that's it, they're written off. I always prefer the comic book approach and where if a villain is bested, they're either put in jail or they kind of get away with it. And it's always, you know, live to fight another day kind of thing. And after Superman, there could be all kinds of like resentment, like way more resentment than what Lex Luthor already has. And he might want to take his plan to the next stage and things slowly pave their way forward to the Legion of Doom, especially, sorry to bring it up again, in a DCU and where heroes and villains have existed for a long time, who knows which other Legion of Doom members could already have been doing their thing with fighting against their heroes for a long time as well. So the Legion of Doom is like a really organic thing to unfold, especially in this universe in where a lot of us are speculating and how heroes are going to just unite more and more over time if and only if we're picking up in a DCU in where... I'm not saying Superman doesn't have metahuman compatriots because he does and other heroes are probably friendly and there's been team ups. We know that, right? But I'm just saying, you know, Superman might inspire that what I like to call superhero autonomy, like Hawkgirl and whatnot might become a bit more of their own individualized and unique heroes. And so when they're building up more and more in the Justice League, if having been a previous thing and, you know, maybe got disbanded and let's just say they launch again post Superman movie, they're growing, they're growing, the heroes are growing, they're teaming up more i think the villains should most definitely do that as well and a legion of doom threat could be like a really cool thing to cook in the background as one of the potential big bads of chapter one or again chapter two we're gonna have to wait and see but yeah with the dcu building up big bads potentially over multiple projects like chapter one there's so many candidates of whom could fit in an actual Legion of Doom long-term storyline being cooked up in the background. But let me know your thoughts. Would you like the Legion of Doom or is there a completely different villain such as, I don't know, maybe Brainiac being a long-term whole DCU chapter villain, whether that's chapter one or chapter two. Also, don't forget that we have chapter one and chapter two, so there can be Brainiac and the Legion. Or do you want Vandal Savage? Or do you want somebody else? And next up, related to kind of what we were just talking about, KB-XQ2RY saying, I hope the Justice League aren't a thing yet, and I'd love to see them all come together to found the team. This is something I would love to get your input on, because I've seen a lot of people put theories out there on how in this world, I mean, let's just assume, and again, by the way, I have no idea if the Josh Brolin thing, by the time you're watching this, like a week later from when I'm recording it, has been shot down or not. But let's hypothetically entertain Josh Brolin is Hal Jordan. And we know Hal Jordan is a Lantern legend. He's been a Lantern legend for quite a long time because even if Josh Brolin isn't playing his age as Hal Jordan, which is 56, let's just say Josh Brolin's playing a Hal who's like in universe 47, he could have still had that ring for like 20 years. So a lot of people with that in mind and, you know, just the very description of how Jordan being a Lantern legend are kind of entertaining the idea that what if the Justice League were indeed a thing, but for one reason or another, they disbanded. Um, but again, post Superman with Superman really, and I think this is going to be an obvious thing that does happen by the ending events of the movie, reinvigorates the idea of superhero autonomy, like being a hero outside of maybe what the current parameters and climate of the DCU have got to. I'm not saying it's like super corporate and super kingdom come or something like that where companies and military only regulate 
superhero team ups and stuff like no i mean look at batman he's out there look at probably green lantern Hal jordan he's doing his own thing like people are still operating in the world individually like superman but my point is still the climate and the parameters of things could have got a little bit different to what they used to be so superman ignites the need for and the desire for another team up in a world and where team ups have maybe been a bit more regulated again this is speculation that could be way off base but I do like the idea the more I hear about it and how the Justice League, just like the JSA, if we assume that there's going to be a prequel, hypothetically, in how there was a team up in World War II. And back then, you know, that was a golden age of heroes with good moral compasses and stuff. And that's maybe been left a bit more adrift as we get into the present day DCU in like in universe 2025, where you have Hawk Girl, Mr. Terrific, Guy Gardner being a part of Lord Tech's team. You have the engineer and this black suited figure being maybe a part of of uh, a military black ops group similar to creature commandos you know being sent in with rick flag in in the superman movie uh, without giving too many spoilers away there so i would like the idea of how maybe the justice league as kb says here aren't a thing yet or anymore compared to what they used to be but superman reinvigorates the desire to have team-ups because perhaps it's been left to the point in previous years and where for one reason or another and i really don't know what is a great reason for this they disbanded perhaps because the world or the people of the world or the companies and like the powers that be the governments felt like there wasn't so much of a need for a justice league group and that kind of um you know forced them out not like forced them out the door but it became a bit like the world became a bit more apathetic to them and that's where again we're in this current state in the dcu in where things are a bit more like clouded but as things unfold with the literal beacon of hope that is superman and the movie's original title being superman legacy he really does reignite that and yeah so that still adheres to what kb is saying here because it would be cool to see them come together again and clark kind of bring back the founding pillars um and just, you know, desire to see a Justice League again. But let me know if you can kind of expand on that. Maybe reshuffle a couple of things that I said. Maybe I didn't really have a good idea in one place. But maybe you can think of something that would fit in better where I was saying another thing. How do you think this could work? Do you think the Justice League is or has never been a thing and will get created uh, post-Superman? Or do you think they have been a thing, but something or another happened and, you know, Clark's got to bring back the reinvigoration that will bring about the Justice League 2.0 again? And I'm going to leave this video there for now, but I'm kind of annoyed at myself because I still didn't get through as many freaking questions as what I wanted to. There's some great ones I would have loved to have rambled about for a lot longer. But for now, that is a little dose of DCU theories and speculation and discussion that we're going to get into in today's video. I am absolutely dying to see what you guys have to say down in the comments below i might be on a beach right now reading some of your replies i know i'm on vacation but you know i know my video is uploading aroundabouts now and uh you know i'm gonna read a few comments even if it's like a week later from when i'm filming filming this yes but either way i hope you guys enjoyed it cannot wait to see what you have to offer to the table in terms of discussion if you enjoyed this video do consider leaving a like consider subscribing to the channel for not only more discussion series videos like this but news updates uh you know topical videos and all good things like that it'd be great to have you on board but until next time ladies and gentlemen i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you people of the dcu in the next video goodbye